so Bobby, you've had a month since the season finished last last year. Um, obviously that Durham Challenge Cup win uh, against Spennymoor um, in playoffs as well. So now that you have had time to reflect, um, if you had much time to re- reflect, uh, if you press the reset button or if you looked all towards next season. No, obviously proud of the club of what we did, but it's gone now. Um, probably after the Durham Challenge Cup, a couple of days after you enjoy it and then start again ready to go for next year so what we've done last year you can't rest on that you've got to look forward and we've started doing that from you know probably uh, during the season last year so we've we're planning for next year and we believe that we're getting a you know another two or three bodies in that are going to bring something different to the squad from last year yeah we'll just touch on the retain list so Four keepers, Kieran and Matty Bateman, Heidi Coulson and Sean Newbrook. So just w- them working with Carl again, obviously it's consistent from last year, so is that just nice to have all four again? Yeah, for me, Carl's one of the best goalkeeping coaches in the North East. Uh, great lad, and you can see that, I think, from the development of the goalkeepers. Um, Sean's probably been... I've seen some goalkeepers in this league, probably in the top two over the last two years. To be fair with him, and probably the workshop keeper, and maybe Stockton Stockton's keeper. But I know he missed missed a lot of you know last season through injury. I'd say them three over the last two or three years have been um, on par with each other and the best goalkeepers in the league. And I think that's something for the younger lads, especially the ones that are training with him week in week out. It's something they can look up to. Yeah, and we've got a few midfielders as well, Robbie Spence, Aaron Thompson, Liam Murray as well, so it's still all consistent from last year, so that must be really nice. Yeah, they're still brilliant age for playing football, lads that should be coming into you know an age bracket where they should be playing the best football that they really will play during their careers probably, and again, I thought they were outstanding, you'd, you'd be far-fetched as a, you know, as a set of three and we obviously with the additions coming in, you know, to find better in the league as lads as well, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, looking just at one player, Will McCamley, who missed most of last season. Um, is it a chance for him now? Just to, now that he has been sort of it reduced back into it towards the end of last season. It's it's he's got another full year ahead of him, hasn't he? Yeah, I know he'll be working hard pre season. And I hope he comes back with that, you know, that point to prove. Um, he's shown us what he could do towards the back end of the season. That was just glimpses, and I, I, re- I really hope he comes back pre-season and takes off from where he was last uh, last pre-season because I think everyone was very excited to see him. And then obviously that unfortunate injury is is a great great kid, and I'm looking forward to seeing him back pre-season. Yeah, and we'll just touch on a few wingers as well. Joe Walton, really impressive last year. Willie Martin and young James Harrison as well. All them so far are attained for next year as well. Yeah, um, brilliant. Again, first and foremost, great lads. Um, take it, you know, as professional as we do. And we great age again. You know, Joe's uh, the wrong side of 30, but you'd think he's an 18-year-old the way he plays. And that's what we want in our sides. And... One thing they all do is play for the badge. So individually, yes, they bring all different things to the squad, in on and off the pitch, in the dressing room, on the bus to away games. Every, I'd like to think every single person in the dressing room is bringing something different to the club. Yeah, and one player who signed a new contract who really impressed last year, Amak Piwa, um, won three end of season awards as well, and you, you could see he was just beaming with confidence every time he went over there. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure really what what you can say about him apart from the model professional, the way he treats it. He he, he takes this, you know, as the way he t- approaches games. Obviously, the way he looks after himself away from football. You'd think he was a full time footballer, and that's the attitude that we want around the club. And I've said it on numerous occasions. We have <coughs> we can't be stink. Uh, thinking like a step four side we've got to be thinking like a step two side if we want to progress and when you've got players like that 
laid in the line for you, then you know you're on a good thing. Yeah, and three defenders as well, Tom Dever, Jack Donaghy and Dan Groves as well. So you must be pleased with that. Yeah, three solid defenders who, you know, I think when we went through that spell of winning eight, nine games, they were absolutely outstanding. And I think with another pre-season, working on things defensively, they'll be even better for it. And they'll learn a lot from last year because, you know, don't get away from the fact that when we seemed to lose last year, we lost in style, shall we say. So it's something we'll work on pre-season and staying in games, which is a remit for what I want from our teams. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really pleased with everyone that's, that's staying and you know, a bit of a thank you to the lads that have, that have moved on. Yeah, and you sat in the same place here a year ago and you weren't sure if you were going to play as much as you have. I think you played 20, 30 times last year. So are you feeling fit for next year? We've had a chat and yeah, I'm going to do, I, last year I didn't do pre-season really at all, just joined in when the numbers um, weren't right, but I'm going to commit to it this year, you know, I've started doing my own thing with, you know, um, a fella that I used to know at Spennymore, who is going to help me along the way and manage my body and then pre-season, I'm going to give it a go and get as fit as I can, so then if if I'm needed again, I'll be I'll be a, probably a lot fitter than I was last year, because uh, obviously the plan was last year not really to play unless it was an emergency, and then I think a few weeks into the season it was an emergency, and then I ended up playing a lot more games than I thought I would, but hopefully, you know we're still working on bringing players in again. I'm hoping that I won't have to play. However, I'll be doing pre-season this year. Yeah, we'll touch on the two lone players as well. Uh, obviously, Nathan Simpson went on the same professional Middlesbrough, and then Jake Hackett as well, who did a great job at the end of last season, uh, obviously on loan from Whitby. Yeah, um, Nathan, really pleased for him. Really good lad. Um, he'll, he'd have learned a lot from the experience that he gained with us. I know it weren't, it weren't for a sustained period of time, but you could see he's got the attributes to go on and do really well for himself and then Jake was outstanding when he came in I think he changed the dynamic of the side made us stronger towards the end of the season and he played a massive part in what we did last year so we can't forget that and obviously it is something that we're looking at over the summer to bring him back so we're working hard you know away from the pitch to try and make that happen so we'll touch on Kieran Charlton as well and um, obviously it, 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 I don't think he could have been any more unlucky. You bring him in 20 minutes into his debut, he goes off. And I think you, you spoke to him regarding pre-season, but he's, he's went for Wickham with that. Yeah, it was, it was honest conversation with him. He, obviously, from the 20 minutes that we saw him or whatever it was, I know he's a good player, but at this level, obviously the injury he had, he felt like he probably, you know, I know for a fine fact there'd be clubs that are wanting him, but with an injury like that, I couldn't guarantee, you know, offering him something until, obviously, we'd seen him in pre-season. And he totally understood that and we had a conversation and, you know, I know the Wickham manager well, so I know he'll be looked after there and, it, you know, they're building a good side, so he'll be playing in a good side and wishing well going to Wickham. Yeah, just on one player who we haven't seen in quite a while, who was obviously released, Ollie Walters, I don't think it was ever really explained what sort of happened to him, but if you want to just explain to sports. Yeah, obviously, Ollie came out of professional football, came to heaven. He weren't really keen on what happened. The previous regime didn't really enjoy it. He came to us, he was enjoying his football, and then he, you know, he found himself in limbo regarding work. So he had to get himself a job. He was struggling to juggle both, I think, but because I think the first part, first good few months of his job were working away. So he was struggling to travel and he just made that decision to stop playing, which is a massive shame because me and, me and Huddy loved him. I thought he was a really good player, really exciting. And it's a real shame, but I do hope he, he, you know, he gets back in football at some point because it'd be a shame to see a lad like that you know, disappear and not play anymore. 
I think he just probably needed to go away, get that work life balance sorted out, and then you know he might he might come back and it's it's something I might I might drop him a message over the summer and see if he's if he fancies coming back pre season. Yeah, Dylan Archer was someone who so played pre season for you, played in August on him dual registration low league that sides and now he's obviously found his feet gates had any experience for him so wish him all the best as well. Yeah, yeah, he done he done well for us, a, a young lad. Um probably suited um going and playing the younger football but when we needed him he was there and, and done a good job for us and then he went on loan to a couple of Northern League sides and then obviously at Gateshead he's he'd be training with a college I think he's at and training with the first team full time. So that's that's gonna help in him in his development and yeah, I wish again wish him all the best in what he does next. Yeah, and similar to James Paler, Daniel Field was someone who you brought in when we're quite low on bodies. He he'd done his job, he played quite a few Durham Challenge Cup games and there uh, obviously he leaves as well. Yeah. Both of them, Paler came obviously come back from abroad, came in did a job for us and then he's gone to play Northern, wanted to play local, which is fine. Dan was outstanding, you know, another really professional young lad and probably just wanted game time, which, he, you know, he deserved. We, I think the stage of the season where we thought about putting him, we were going through that sticky patch and we didn't really want to throw, you know, someone that's probably not had exposure to that league into that fire pit. And then he's gone away and played. He's played a few games for Tower Law. So hopefully, you know, he's. He, he, I'm sure he, there'll be plenty of takers for him in the Northern League. Yeah, Michael McEwen was the player who you know really got to see in year. Obviously injured two years ago with his ACL and never really recovered as well. So do I just expand on that? Yeah, um, we spoke with Mickey last pre-season. Um, you know, we invited him back when when he'd recovered from his injury. I know he was having trouble coming back, picking up little niggles, and he was around. You know, we didn't see as much as him as we'd like to early doors, but you know, he's, everyone's got lives, and I suppose when you get an injury like that, you know, at his age as well, it's it's a tough one to take because it takes a when you think really you should be playing, you miss two years of football. So again. Um, I've not spoke to him recently, but again, I wish him all the best, and wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if he rocks up in the Northern League if he wants to get back and just have another year and join himself. So. Yeah, and three big players local the last year. You brought them in to help you change that winning mindset. Um, obviously, you know you have released them, so I want to just touch on Reedy, Hendo, and Wayne Phillips as well. I've got nothing but outstanding things to say about all three of them. They were. Brilliant for the club, brilliant for the dressing room, brilliant as individuals on the pitch. Um, Hendo, I know he was very, very frustrated. I think he'd gone out and done a bit pre, pre, pre-season, pre which he'd never done before. And he's come in at pre-season, he's picked up a knock, and then once you're struggling in pre-season, it's hard to catch up. Um, Wayne, model professional. You know, 36 year old, 37, absolutely outstanding, fit as a fiddle, playing multiple, played in multiple positions for us. When he didn't play, he got around the lads, and he led, he he led the he led the team last year, and that's the biggest compliment you can pay him. And then Reedy was brilliant for us. You know, came in as a midfielder. Really, we knew we could play centre half, <clears throat> and. He went back that he went back there when we were struggling, and he was you know one of the first names on the team sheet. Um, we've probably caught up with his body towards the end of the season, and he'll openly admit that. But they were all brilliant, and they can all they could all still play at this level, no problem at all. But you know I know they've they've all got families and. So what they do in the future, I know Reedy's gone low, gone and signed for Heat and Stanton, which is local to him, young family, totally understand. And I wish all three of them the best. Yeah, just on the topic of leaders, I know you're not too fussed about who is captain, but just have you had a, a thought about who takes the armband next season? Yeah, I have. And I know who it's going to be. Uh, there'll be two lads next year that lead, lead for us. 
and obviously we'll save that until when I've spoken to them and then you can announce it if you like <laughs> but I, I'd like to, I want to speak to them first because they, they won't just be them two obviously a captain vice captain there'll be a group of players that I speak to pre-season or even before pre-season that you know we're going to take on that mantle of what Hendo Wayne really did for us it's time now some of those lads the senior lads step up and do that job yeah we'll touch on the league teams for next year obviously two teams come down Liver's Edge who you have played before mm -hmm. and Belba who have signed a number of players so will that make more challenging for you next year yeah I know Belper are going strong I think their aim is to immediately bounce back and go straight back up. Obviously, I'm from not far from where that club's based, so I do know a fair bit about them and what their plans are. Um, Liversidge, I don't know. I don't know where where that leaves them because obviously they went up the flying colours and then they've come back down straight away. When I expected them, if they kept the same squad together, to not be don't not be coming straight back down at all. I'd I'd expected them to be, you know, the top end of the table. So I think it'll be a real open league next year, but them too, yeah, I know Belper will be a real threat to the division, I think. Yeah, and four teams coming up, North Farrow Beast, obviously their their Phoenix Club, um Winterton, Scum Top Way, and then two local ones, Ashton and New Nicholas as well. Yeah. Um North Ferriby are a massive club. Won the trophy, what, four years ago? Three, four, four, five years ago? And then went a bit like Darlington, went into that little administration stage and they're on the way back. And I think that, is it back-to-back -back promotions for them or yeah. something along them lines with COVID? Um, so that, yeah, they're obviously a cl club that's going to be, you'd imagine, there or thereabouts, top end of the table. Uh, Winston, and much, I don't know a lot about, but I'll do my homework on them and then Acliffe won the Northern League at a canter really um, they've got some really good individual players a couple that I've tried to sign myself in recent years and they're a dangerous outfit then along with Ashton who littered with experience and I think I wouldn't be surprised if those teams that you've just mentioned North Ferriby Ashton Acliffe Liversidge, Belper in your top 10. Um, that's how open this league will be. Yeah, and with that, um, have you set any aims for next season in terms of league and obviously Durham Challenge Cup? Not at the moment. I've not really sat and thought, yes, we're going to do this. Into, between me and Hoodie, we know what we want to achieve. Um, and we'll speak to the players pre-season you know we'll sit in this room and we'll go through the objectives of what we want to do and I'll say no but yes we have got an idea but I'm not going to come on here and say we're going to do this and that At the end of the day this league is a very tough league and we have to be competing that's the main thing we have to be competing at the top end of the table and anyone can beat anyone it's all about consistency look at works up last year consistent week in week out and you know Stockton consistent us consistent most of the time um, and long eaten after, after Christmas consistent so you'd think those teams are the most consistent teams from last year and that's what it's all about in this division and I think it'll be tougher than last year and, but you know it's there for for everyone to enjoy and have a go at and just keeping on topic of one of those teams Ashton obviously you, you've signed Briggsy who has been one of the star players over the last few years so how delighted are you with that buzzing with that one your brilliant age um, played all over you know played abroad played in England obviously um He's something. He's someone. Sorry, that I've been after for what probably two or three years. A player that I really think could do really good things in this league. And obviously, in our team, we like to have a go at teams and play forward. And he's he's a bit of an off the cuff player. 
which I enjoy. You know, I think sometimes you, the kids come through these days and they try and get it coached out of them in academies. But I think he's a bit of an off-the-cuff player and I think it's something that we need in the team in the final third. And the most important thing for me is his character. I know his dad and I know one thing from his dad, if he, if he takes half of his character, he's going to be a winner. And that's you know what what we all want at the club. In two lads who you've worked with before, obviously Chair Level and in Hayward from Sheldon both coming in as well. Yeah. Um top players, top blokes and winners. Um Aiden is someone that I've had for the last five years, since he was 18, 19 year old. I've seen him develop into a a really top young man off the pitch and on the pitch I see my I, I've told him this and he, he gets a bit you know maybe a bit embarrassed about it but I see a lot of myself in him he's a real he's a real winner on the pitch he demands from everyone you know he's got a bit about him and he, the thing for me is a massive leader of, at such a young age and he's and you know, people might think he's come to heaven because he's he's local, but he's not. He's come because he wants to win. And if I'd have been managing a team up in Scotland, he'd have been one of the first players that I'd have been going to try and get because I think that highly of him. So he's un he'll be under pressure from me. I demand from him, and he can take that on his shoulders. And so I'm expecting you know a big player to be playing for us next year. Um, che Little again. Ultimate professional for me. He's played at levels higher, very, very fit, but more importantly, a proper footballer. You know, he's got a football brain. Um, he'll he'll make the players around him better. And that's, again, a compliment to him. He's been outstanding for me over the last three or four years. And again, he had numerous clubs with offers on the table for him and he's chose to come here. Coming from Middlesbrough, I think he, that tells you why why he's coming here because he, he believes in what we're doing and believes in me and Mark and he'll bring some real good experience to the midfield, help the players around him and I think the supporters will love play, watching him play football. Yeah, and one yet to be announced, but eight pre-season games so far, six of them at home. I think the biggest two are probably Gates and some of the 21s, the, the two full-time clubs. Yeah. Obviously lots of normal league sites as well, so how important is it to have such a sort of hectic pre-season schedule get players? Up yeah, we, we say it's hectic, but we've got a couple of Friday night games, which means we can give the lads one session off. And that's that'll be why we start in a couple of sessions early. You know, when, when I'm not going to get them in Tuesday, Thursday, and play on a Friday. I'm not going to do that. We can't afford to have people breaking down. But we, so we've spread it out over two or three sessions more, just to give everyone that longevity of, you know, them Friday games will probably give the lads a bit of a bit of a break physically, which they need because it'll be tough. But the games we've got. I'd like to think we've got a brilliant mixture mixture this year. Again, last year, last summer, it was a there was some the club already had, and then we were rushing to get some in, and we ended up playing some really tough games and a lot of games because we wanted to look at what what we had available and what we needed to bring in during pre season. <clears throat> but it's a really good schedule, you know. Nice trip up to Scotland early doors, which. It's more of a one getting everyone together after a few training sessions. You you itching to get back on the pitch, and then it incorporates a little bus trip where we can have a bit of you know bit of a drink, bit of a laugh up there, and we're gonna come back and stop off somewhere on the way back for a couple of hours and have a bit of a sing song, have a bit of a laugh, and then obviously it, the gate said on the Tuesday, I think it is. Might be not ideal full time team if we've gone and had a few sherbets on the Saturday, but it's what we want. It'll be a different type of game. 
and we've got some really good pre-season friendlies and I'm really pleased with what we've got and then hopefully that one on the 15th will, will top it off which obviously we're just waiting for it to be confirmed. Yeah, and no, I was just going to speak about that Dumbarton game, but it was also South Shields away as well, so another full-time outfit, um, obviously away from home, recently promoted as well, so that should be another good one. Yeah, congratulations to them. They've been, I think, <laughs> they've deserved to go up to be fair the last couple of years or whatever it was, COVID, and it'll be nice to go there and see what see what plans they've got in place for that league, because that, that league is brutal. I know there's a lot of full time teams in there. In in, I'd imagine in the next three or four years that National League North won't be far off being a full time league, um, and it'd be nice for the supporters to go there as well. Local derby. I know they came here last year, so nice relationship. Go there this this year and hopefully put put a good performance on and start building up towards you know come August. Yeah, and our under-18s won the league last year, our under-23s finished third, and I know you are keen on using younger talent, so is there an opportunity to see more of that in pre-season? Yeah, we sat in this room only last week or the week before, and we had six or seven lads that will be with us pre-season, and that they will be with us pre-season until... You know, we, we think they may need to go back to the under-18s or do they need to go out on loan or do we, you know, sign them on first-team forms and give them a contract. But they've been identified, over, that's not something we've done off the cuff. they have been players that have been identified for the last, probably by the club, the last four or five years and then by us by for the last six months to a year. And some of them have been involved with us towards the back end of the season played games for us, trained with us. So it's something we've we've wanted to implement since I've come as manager, incorporating the youth set up. There's no point having that youth set up if we're not gonna, you know, utilise it and give players the opportunity. So <clears throat> come pre season, that opportunity will be there for them and they've got to grasp that with both hands and see where it takes them. Yeah, and just finally looking at the next few weeks ahead, you've got about just over a fortnight before pre-season starts. So is there anything for yourself that you're looking at that you're still trying to improve with the squad or can we expect any, anything else? Yeah, I'm looking for one more player. Um, may happen, may not. Um, but we, I'm, again, I've said I'm not one of these that's going to, apart from obviously last year, where I think we needed to do that, where we moved six, seven players on. That will never happen under me. Three or four maximum will come in and just say more or move on. And yeah, I'm if obviously I've not really had a break yet. So <laughs> I'll I'd like to get that signing over the line so I can just maybe switch off for a couple of weeks, but it never happens. And I say switch off, but I love it. So pre season is planned out what we're gonna do, which sessions what we're gonna do. Um the lads will come in and we'll have a bit of a you know a little testing session on that first one back see how they are but you know we it's we need to manage their bodies and make sure they're prepared for for august and the pre-season schedule is going to allow us to do that with a build up to games a few games and then maybe bring it back down again with a few training sessions before that first league game so we're looking forward to pre-season and yeah, I'll see you, probably see you in a few weeks.